A common situation in IT is that you have a device that's plugged in, you don't know exactly which switch port it goes to, you don't know what IP it has, and you have to get into that device somehow. Guys, this was a ticket that I had recently. My name's Jake, I'm a system administrator at an MSP. An MSP is a managed service provider, so we give IT services to other companies. Specifically in my case, mostly banks and credit unions, financial institutions. However, we also have some other companies that I'm gonna talk about today that are not financial institutions, and it's uh, it's kind of a different world. In the financial institution world, we have high regulation and things are very standardized. In companies that aren't FIs, uh, you're going to have much less regulation, so it's a lot more of wild, wild west of IT as you're going to see today. So in today's ticket, we had to do something that was called walking uh, the network, and really it was all just to track down the IP address of this certain device. So we had a device and we needed to know where it was plugged in, first of all. Um, in order to find out where a device is plugged in, like when you think about it, you would think you just have device and you plug it straight into a switch. In real world companies and production, that's not exactly what it's like. You have a device that plugs into probably an unlabeled wall port that runs all the way through a wall, 150 feet of ethernet cord or whatever, um, that then goes to a patch panel and the patch panel then goes to one of multiple switches. So it's not really as easy as you'd think. In this case, we really just wanted to figure out where's this device plugged in, what is its IP address? You would think that it's relatively simple. Sometimes that's not as simple as you'd think because of the thing that I just said. Um, so in this case, we had a half of a MAC address. We didn't even know which location it was at because we didn't want to call the internal contact to get that. So there were three locations. I just we were just gonna check all three of them. Um, it happened to be the third location that we checked that we finally found it at, so that was that was kind of a shame. Uh, the device was actually, it was like a horn. It was like an IP, I don't know if they actually say stuff over it, um, but it was connected by IP, a TCP IP in it. And you say, you know, I guess project your voice to people outside, um, but they didn't know where the switch port was and they didn't know actually how to get into the device. So if you have a MAC address at layer two, which is the switching layer, right? It's the, the kind of hardware MAC address layer. You can track down ports that devices are in. Why? Because you have a switch. A switch has a ton of different ports, right? And the ports, when a switch receives messages, with those messages at layer two is a MAC address. And the switch remembers MAC addresses, okay? So when you first plug a computer into the network, the computer says, hey, I don't have an IP. You know, where's the DHCP server? That message that's sent out, that DHCP uh, discover message, it's called, is gonna hit that switch port and the switch is instantly gonna go, okay, I remember this MAC is on this port. And it's important for the switch to remember that because then later at layer two, uh, when a device is trying to communicate with that at layer two, the switch could say, huh, I know where it goes to that computer. So in the case of this horn, we had half of a MAC address. So we can hop into switches and we can do something uh, called walking the network, which is trying to um, find the port that it's on. Oftentimes you also have multiple switches. So you have a stack of switches. The switches are connected to each other, right? Why would you do this? Because if you only have 48 ports, but you have 150 devices, you're gonna need more switches. <laughs> and switches only get so big, right? It's easier to stack them than it is to make some massive, you know, 512 port switch or however you do something like that. So. The horn was plugged in. I hopped into the first switch and I ran show MAC address table. So show MAC address table is a Cisco command that will show you not only the MAC addresses, also the VLANs, virtual LANs. Talk about that in a different video and the switch port that's tied to that MAC address. So I run show MAC address table. Of course, on those first two locations, I'm gonna skip them because we just did the same thing in every location. When I finally got to the right location, I see that I can see the first half of this MAC address. Now, another important thing is that a MAC address, uh, I can't remember the exact number of characters. I think it's 12 hexadecimal characters. The first half of it is called the OUI, the organizational unique identifier, which is a certain organization that makes these things. So I knew that if I had that first half, um, I could at least find that kind of device. Fortunately, there was only one horn at this location. So it was the only one that had that MAC address. So I find the MAC address and it shows switch port 24, for example. However, I see a ton of other MAC addresses on switch port 24. What does this tell me? It tells me that switch port 24 is probably plugged in to another switch because remember switches remember MAC addresses. Well, this switch is seeing a ton of MAC addresses on switch port 24. That means that it probably has another switch that's got a bunch of stuff plugged into it, and it's remembering all of those MAC addresses on the same port. Switches dynamically can remember MAC addresses. So that's important too to remember. Um, when you see that, as somebody who's familiar with networking, you think that there's probably another networking device that's plugged into that. So you can run something called a show interfaces trunk, and you can find all of these ports that are called trunk ports. Trunk ports are just ports that connect uh, multiple switches and multiple multiple VLANs can be passed across those ports. Again, we're getting a little bit deep, but when I see that it's a trunk port, I will also run something called uh, CDP. So I'll run show CDP neighbor. Show CDP neighbor, CDP is Cisco discovery protocol. It'll show neighboring switches. So 
I've confirmed that there's multiple MAC addresses on this port. It's a trunk port, so there's probably, you know, it's probably connected to another switch. And then I can be sure that it's connected to another switch because CDP will show you the neighboring switch, the neighboring switch's IP, the neighboring switch's host name. It shares a bunch of information. It's really cool. So I go into the next switch. I do the same exact process. Show MAC address table. I see the MAC address. I see multiple other MAC addresses on that port. That means that it's a trunk port. Show interfaces trunk. Show CDP neighbor. I finally get to the third switch. Finally find the switch port that it's actually on. Um, by the time I'm in that third switch, and I could probably do this in the first switch as well. I can use something called ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, that matches MAC addresses to IP addresses. So I can uh, show IP ARP and in the switch, and that'll show, hey, this MAC address is matched to this IP address. This MAC address is ma matched to this IP address. Um, and we, it was as simple as that. Now, if we just had the MAC address and DHCP was on, for example, a Windows Server instance, it's even easier because you can just hop into the Windows Server, which is just like a, you know, a GUI, and uh, look for the MAC address there and look for the IP address that accompanies that MAC address that the DHCP server gave out to it. Now, ideally with stuff like this, horns, cameras, uh, ATMs, security panels, stuff like that, you probably want to give them static IPs. In this case of this ticket, we just, you know, with the information that we had, apparently they didn't know how to manage it. Uh, the vendor didn't give it a static IP. Maybe it couldn't do static IPs. I don't even really have that much context between behind what this horn was doing. All I know is that when I get a, you know, a tier one that comes up to me and says, hey, Jake, I need to find this device and what IP it has. Um, we know that it's plugged into a switch. We know that this is the OUI. Can you help me? It's a great excuse for me to hop into to a network device and try tracking it down. So, but the idea of walking a network showing MAC addresses, interfaces trunk, and then using CDP is something that I didn't learn until maybe six months into uh, being a system administrator. I had already had CCNA, but um, you can see how all this networking stuff is really, really, really important to be able to administer network devices better. And the more, I guess, the better you get at IT, the more you realize that um, all of IT is just just manipulating data. And oftentimes it's just a matter of not having enough data and you need to know how to get more data. And that's why I love networking because it's predictable. And that's why I also think it's beautiful because everyone's scared of it, but really at a fundamental level, it's very simple. You have things plugged into other things. Uh, they communicate at different layers of the OSI model. Uh, you can use different tests and you know commands to be able to verify where things are, um, why traffic isn't passing, why traffic is passing, which wasn't the case in this case, but um, tracking a device down, it's like a, it's like a scavenger hunt, right? And we finally tracked it down. So that was a real life networking ticket. Uh, it wasn't anything super stressful. It probably took us 30 minutes. It was fun. It was tracking down a horn by MAC address uh, and finding its IP address so that they could try and get into it and manage it. To be honest with you, after that, I did all this with the T1. I showed them what was going on. I gave them the information. I forgot about the ticket. Like I, we do so much stuff on our day to day too as uh, working at an MSP um, that this happens multiple times a week that I have to do something like this and I just completely forget after. Like it's on to the next thing. You're constantly code switching. So, but I do love my job and I do love this networking access of the job. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the support lately. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Happy to share. I'll be making more uncut videos like this, talking about real life tickets. And again, I'm not even editing them very much, not really putting text overlays or anything like that. It's just my raw experience of what's happening. Thanks so much. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions, and good luck walking the network. Bye.